welcome to FX Street. Head on over to YouTube, to our channel, hit that subscribe button, and you can follow Akash and I individually on Twitter, Akash at uh, MangYeko0, uh, and myself at JustAnalysis1. Taking a look here at Ethereum, um, man, Ethereum's been all over the place, but I tell you what, it's had some, the, the respect that's given on the weekly chart to the bottom of the Ichimoku cloud, Senku Span B, been pretty impressive. At the same time, the rejection it's it's given uh, uh, the respect it's given to a rejection at the Tenkinsen has also been really impressive. These wicks and shadows they are they are quite extensive all over the place when you look at the weekly chart. Uh, but last week's weekly candlestick was very very bullish, uh, very similar to the candle that was uh, back on the week of the twenty eighth of January. Um, but no real follow through going into this week. So there is a pretty good resistance level, you know, right at 2,903,000 ,000 for Ethereum. That's, uh, those are some strong psychological price levels that, that have a combined Ichimoku technical resistance zone there now as well. Um, oh, I didn't mean to do it like that, but, uh, well, that's fine. On the daily chart, this this is positioned now. If it closes where it's at, we're still okay. But if there's a daily close around twenty six seventy or lower, um, because it was inside the cloud, if it if it closes below that ten can send now, and given where the chiku span is at, that will fulfill an ideal bear Shichimoku breakout, and that could the the fib extension for that. The 100% extension brings it all the way down to the 1800 low level. That's where, that's where it could extend down to on the downside. Um, also, it just looks like a very standard looking pennant, doesn't it? Very standard looking bearish pennant. Yeah, actually it does. I mean, it's very it kind of snuck up a little bit. And what's interesting here is that the, the breakdown below this pennant um, would occur after the, itchy, the, 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 tr the trigger for an ideal bearish Ichimoku breakout. The problem with this, this you know, fulfilling is that it needs to close below that, that $2,500 level, which is held up as a very, very strong support zone. So there's a bearish pennant in there that uh, could play, could, could come into play, and you could see a, a, a fast trip down to the uh, 1800 zone. Um, but structurally, on the weekly, oscillator-wise, really doesn't support that. Uh, but I will, I will say that, like, upside, you know, when we revisit this on Tuesday, what I see for upside is limited to that, Maybe three thousand to thirty one hundred is where I see it going to on the top side. As far as downside, I could definitely see coming back down to twenty five hundred and testing that six one eight again as resistance. You know, it's it's fulfilled an ideal bearish Ichimoku breakout several times since Fe it, since the middle of February to where we are now. But uh, you know, if bears are unable or unwilling to push it south, and additionally. On the um, point and figure side here, this is on the 100. Uh, let me just fix that there. There, 200 and 4200. There is this potential long setup um, with the break above this double top that would form. What well, what's good about this is that the entry off the now an entry off of a double off of a double top is really not an entry at all unless it's like a catapult or something else but the entry above the double top would break the bear market angle and convert ethereum into a bull market on its 100 dollar uh three box reversal point figure chart that is a big deal that would be a very very big deal and um from a price action only perspective you could you can see this happening you can't on the candlestick chart but this this may be hinting at a little bit of a bait and switch to the upside, but we'll see. Um, downside, again, going into Tuesday, 
uh, limited to 2,500 upside to 3K. Uh, I'll pass it off to you, Akash. Thank you, John. So um, Ethereum is really interesting. Uh, kind of reminds me a little bit of what, about DOT because uh, DOT also has been rejected by this particular moon gap for quite some time. Uh, and I'm seeing a similar pattern develop here for Ethereum as well. I expected uh, this pool here, uh, I expected uh, Ethereum to bounce up this demand zone and maybe at least retest another, the daily supply zone another time. But the supply zone extends from 31,800, $3,188 to $3,393. So conservative target, uh, I don't see Ethereum going above the 3,200 roughly. Right beyond this, even if we do get uh, a pierce into the supply zone here, it it, uh, it could be stopped by this 100-day moving average at roughly 3,400. And then we have the 200-day uh, moving average kind of coinciding roughly around this 3,600 level. So I don't see Ethereum going beyond 3,600. Uh, even if we do get an invalidation of this uh, daily supply, uh, it's going to be capped around 3,600. As for the downside, from a... For a different perspective, things are looking pretty good. It's producing higher lows and higher highs. So I I could see I could see something like this play out. Price comes down, dips below this, and then makes another one for the supply zone. So the twenty five percent upswing is what I'm looking at for Ethereum because uh, this this kind of uh, setup plays out quite a lot of times, as you can see here. Forms the bottom, dips below it, and then goes higher. Mm -hmm. Forms the bottom, dips below it, and then goes high. Right, so I could see something like this play out around 2,600, 2,500. So, yeah, uh, like I mentioned, upside cap at 2,600. If I'm conservative, 3,200. And from a long term, from one day time frame, right? If we get a weekly close below $2,324, uh, then I'm looking at a retest of 1,730, and the liquidity resting below that due to the triple bottom set of the first bomb here. Right, this this scenario only plays out if Bitcoin uh, crashes below $34,752, which would uh, open uh, which would open the path from essentially to move down to $30,000. $30, so this is an extremely bearish outlook. Don't and... tease. Don't tease. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it probably happen. I would love to see a total another. I would love to see another sell off personally. I would. I would not be upset. I'd be as happy as a fat kid in a candy store in a buy one get ten free day. <laughs> but this, I, I see this one. Uh, this crash down to one thousand seven hundred thirty possible only if uh, you know the uh, the Russia versus uh, Ukraine kind of escalates and other countries start participating. Uh, now that Russia's. Uh, talking about nukes i think this this could happen like a covid cell crash where we flush out all the uh, the leverage uh, cause maximum pain capitulation i think that could take place somewhere around here for ethereum which is 1730 that is uh, an extreme case scenario but for now i think uh, ethereum is going to be stuck trading between uh, 2300 and 3600 so that's it for ethereum Right on. Okay. Well, thank you, Akash. And uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.